So we've just um, stripped the bike down and we're putting it back together because we had front plug, plug failing. Oh, that's not where we yet. Yeah, well. Can't exactly say the front plug was fucking flooded like the rest of fucking Australia, can you? Yeah, so this was qualifying for Formula St. George. Um, we'd done qualifying for 600 just prior and I was uh, using this, my wet bike, the Gen 1. And it had a bit of a misfire or a cut, uh, which when I came back in, in between the two qualifying sessions, realized that the OEM rubber flap, which comes off the radiator to help protect the front spark plug from being inundated with water, wasn't on that radiator. Uh, after crashing bikes and moving things around it hadn't been uh, put back on so there was that much water on track it was actually cutting the front cylinder out so we had 20 minutes to try to fix that which we did a pretty good job of but we just didn't just didn't get back out for qualifying so we ended up qualifying in uh, last so actually we're non-qualified so they put us in 19th for the races for the St. George races but thankfully we actually resolved the issue and worked through it nice and calmly um, so Gen 1 pretty much remained unchanged. We put the wet settings back into it after realising at the yep. Sydney West Riders South Circuit day that the wet settings were still in it. So we took the dry settings back out, put the wet settings and that was all good other than the cutting. We were starting to get up to speed. Um, and so after this we go out on Gen 3 in the first 600 race, uh, which you'll see in our other video about the 600 racing, but for this one we're going to take Gen 3 out uh, in Formula St. George. Now, Gen 3's had a bit of work done to it in between uh, the last round of the Summer Night Series where we had the big crash. We did some damage to the fairings and bodywork and a few other bits and bobs. Um, I had actually already ordered some new fairings from Ghetto Customs, Chris Parrish in the States, who makes fairings for the Twins Cup SV650s. Also ordered uh, his custom racing airbox, which uses ram air and also gives us much larger uh, airbox capacity, like the race bikes in the states. And hopefully, we're able to use them to good effect. We also put the geometry which we'd used and some parts back to stock, which we'd used uh, in 2021 to very good effect with good lap times and you know good comfort with me riding. Some of the things that I'd done towards the end of 2021. And for the start of 22, uh, 2022 hadn't quite worked. I wasn't comfortable or confident riding the bike. So I put everything back to standard as it was, gearing, uh, chassis geometry, the swing arm link, everything. And so it was just the bodywork uh, change and the airbox change that we kind of did. Um, unfortunately, the fueling wasn't quite right. Uh, as David gives us the universal sim signal for hello. Um, Unfortunately, the fueling wasn't quite right uh, because of a few issues with uh, some of our sensors. So hopefully the next time we're out, we'll be a bit better. You can see around us, I'm starting 19th. So there's 18 starters in front of us. A couple of towards the back here are, are newcomers to racing. And then we've got David there as well. Um, previous race had been in the wet for Formula St. George. Uh, sorry, the previous time on track had been in the wet, which was qualifying. So this is it, all these people's first time out on a dry or drying track, whereas I'd raced in 600 on a drying track. So I was quite comfortable in the conditions that we had on track. As you can see here, being a bit more up to speed with the conditions and with the bike, I was able to get a very, very good start. The Gen 3 is, despite not fueling perfectly, it is working very well. Back to my old chassis geometry, back to the old settings, which we worked very hard with Rob for a very long time. And you can see straight away, I'm way more comfortable than I had been in the summer night series. Uh, just a reminder, this is Formula St. George, so it's a mixed bag of classes. You've got Moto 3 bikes, got an R3, which we just passed. The white bike uh, a bit further back was a, a Kramer, a $30,000 European full-on race bike, which is amazing. You've got Carl on his uh, Daeglo yellow SV there as well. And us on our 650 end, you know, that was 19th to first in five corners, four and a half corners, and that's just how comfortable I was in the, on the bike, in myself, everything just kind of worked really well. And you can see that there's damp patches, 
uh, around the track. You can see this patch here, we just went past there. It was causing a few issues and then into turn nine, you'll see there's a big river, meaning we had to use about a foot of track on the way in and about the same on exit. Now, unfortunately, that was constantly shifting throughout the race, depending on how many people were hitting certain spots. Um, you see there's a couple of patches here as well into turn uh, 11 and 12, which cause issues as well. So fortunately for me, I've managed to get out in front and just push. I was back to 43s, back to good race pace um, and was just really enjoying it. And I absolutely just uh, hammered away from the rest of the field. I was in my groove. I didn't have to feel the track out. You can hear there I was into the Revolver pretty hard because uh, I had a bit more speed down the straight than I'm used to on the bike. A combination of the fairings and the airbox carry a bit more top speed. Uh, so I might have to do some adjusting to my uh, gearing. So as you see, we've just jumped to lap seven, coming up onto the first of our back markers. So it's one of the uh, new people to racing Demi on a little 300. It's so coming through here, doing what I normally do. I don't want to try not to scare people. Um, closing speed's a bit different, you know. I'm not new to racing. Uh, I felt I gave, I was a bit close uh, to Demi that I needed to be there. Uh, so I had that on my mind. I didn't. Want, I don't want to scare people. I don't want to be, you know, rude on track or whatnot. Uh, I kind of felt a little bit bad there. Coming into this lap here, we're coming up behind H on her 400. Um, and this is a kind of a tricky place to kind of pass. One, you've got Corporate Hill, this big long bend here. So I was thinking, where am I going to pass her? Will I try to uh, pass her into turn nine here? Uh, so I wasn't quite mind on the job. And I was a bit wide on entry and we can see the result of that. So you can see here, I was paying attention to H because I didn't want to scare on entry or exit. And I was thinking about the exit more than entry. And unfortunately I went wide. You can see that nice big stripe of water that was nice and thick and had some sediment in it. And down we go. Now, this goes to show just how far in front we managed to push. I was able to run my uh, very unathletic form over to the bike. You can hear the front wheels spinning there. Uh, and this right here is where Carl in P2 comes past, so 17 odd seconds. Uh, unfortunately, uh, discretion wasn't used here. I was just in this mindset of, you know, it's the last lap, third last corner of the race, stupid error. Trying to get the bike started, watching bikes go past, and you had lapped some of them, hadn't lapsed others. Um, I thought I'd done a good enough job of self scrutineering the bike. You can hear me there, I was uh, yelling there, I was a bit frustrated. Um, a couple of kids didn't really beat themselves into me on the water themselves. I managed to get the bike started here and in my rush, I made a what is a very rookie mistake, kind of mistake that I shouldn't make with my years of experience now. And I try to go straight and one of my handlebars has actually locked itself into the bike. And I end up rather embarrassingly falling over for a second time. I nearly broke Mark Marquez's record for number of crashes in a minute. So you can see here, I've actually gone onto a live track without properly checking the bike over. And uh, that's resulted in me coming onto the inside of turn nine here. Um, thankfully, you know, there was no issue with other riders. And when I spoke to the clerk of the course, they were happy with my reasoning and saying, look, I've punished myself enough. You can see here, just the look of pure dejection and embarrassment. So the next race, out, uh, we managed to get the bike fixed. We went out into the next 600 race. And uh, I rode very crankily. I made the decision that I am no longer going to ride, uh, we won't say not nicely, but twice this year, in 2022, I have ridden uh, overly politely, I'll probably call it, thinking about others rather than thinking about the task at hand of actually riding the track and riding to the condition. And it's resulted in two crashes. So I've made the promise to myself and my team to just focus on what I'm doing and ride appropriately and accordingly. Um, if that means that there's a little bit of chopping going on or if it upsets some people, um, just from a standpoint of, you know, giving someone a shock or something like that, uh, unfortunately that's what's gonna happen. 
Now, because of that crash, this is race two for Formula St. George. I have to start again from last because I didn't finish the race. I have to start from last place. There's a bit of confusion here with positioning, uh, just with the grid sheets. Um, Demi just got a bit confused because of a couple of other people had moved around. And that's fine. It happens all of the time. You'll even see it uh, in some of the other videos that we've posted and some more videos that we'll post from this race event. Even some of the more experienced guys from 600 still do it. So, you know, it's just good to see fresh riders coming in, track day riders that work with us at Sydney West Riders come into our track days at London, making their way out to do some racing. And again, we managed to get another absolutely cracking start from last place. Uh, it's a bit uh, more hard pressed to push. Some of the kids had a bit more enthusiasm this time around than last time. And there was a bit of elbow bashing there with some of the 13 and 14 year olds. It's a uh, good, close, fun racing. It's always awesome. That's uh, Mick Jeffrey in front of us there on the lovely Kramer. Uh, one of his new bikes, which he's just trying to get used to. A slightly different spec to the one that we raced against with him last year, but still a lovely bike. One of my favorite passing points on the track is that flip-flop between four and five. Just hold that corner speed, send it wide, and throw it up the inside. There you can see uh, what I was mentioning about before about not being too aggressive, but making passes stick. Now here, I could have made that pass stick on Carl, but with the water where I had just crashed, I didn't want to force the move because one, Carl's my teammate, two, Carl's my friend, and three, we're not racing for sheep stations here. I don't want to send him into the bush. Same as here, normally I would have made that pass with these patches and the dodgy conditions. There's absolutely no point in making a, a, an a overly aggressive move, uh, especially when I had a bit of an inkling that this was about to happen on the straight after some of the modifications that we've done to the bike. The combination of having the much nicer fairings from Chris, much more aerodynamic, uh, and then the airbox as well, I'm able to tuck in a lot better on that bike than I ever have been. So I think the combination of maybe a slightly perkier motor or better gearing and then the ability to fully tuck uh, allowed me to just slipstream straight past Carl there. Now this race gets very interesting very quickly. As you can see, the weather's starting to close in. I'm able to push a bit of a lead here while the conditions remain mostly okay. And as we get to lap four, it starts to rain. Now I'm a good couple of seconds in the lead at this point. Uh, and as the rain starts to come, I've already crashed once today. Uh, I don't want to crash again. So I'm taking it very gently, still going reasonably quickly. There's a lot of heat in the track and heat in the tires still. Uh, but I get a pretty big shock here going into um, Turn 11 here. You hear throttle pick up there. I actually had a uh, the rear come around on me on entry and then there just again on exit as well. On entry it was, I lost the rear with the throttle closed. And then just as I started to touch it, I hit that uh, patch and then the bike just whoop, wanted to send me. And then again on exit, that was just holding corner speed. The rear wanted to come around on me. You come down the straight doing over 200 k's an hour tipping into a turn one you don't know the grip conditions of because you're just getting rain in your face and on your visor and your screen uh the race was still continuing there was no flags out uh, no red flags or anything like that so we continued around uh it had started to rain there's a crash you can't quite see him there's a chap off into the bush on the right there i believe there's another one off to the left just here now i went off just before me um, so conditions were just patchy, it was coming, the rain and the storm was coming across in big squalls, so it'd be one, you know, five second patch of an absolute downpour. You can see here, turn five is nice, until right at the end of the throttle there, there was just a little bit of a, a slip. And then it's absolutely soaked here coming into turn six. You know, slicks on a damp track is not the best, uh, the best time to be out there, it's one of those dodgy situations where you can quite easily come off. Like I said before, I already had one big crash and was already pretty frustrated with myself and the bill was already going through the roof. 
So I decided to err on the side of caution this time. You can see it's quite damp. This last sector here, uh, around 11 and 12, uh, it was just it was absolutely soaked by this point. I'd already had the moment the previous lap, so I took it nice and easy. Only one downshift instead of two. Nice and cruisy through. You can see that yellow flag was just about to get thrown because the chaps just crashed there. You can just see him right in front of me there now. The green flag and the rain flag out there just as to clear the crash. And as you can see now on the screen, it's absolutely starting to belt down. I'm actually sitting up on the straight now, trying to signal to get the race stopped. Um, as the lead rider, one of the more experienced riders there, I wanted the race to be called off because it was getting to a point where lots of people were going to start to crash. There had already been four down on that previous lap. And as you can see there, they went to red. Um, it was There was such chaos with people going down on multiple corners. It took just a little bit longer for race direction to make the call than perhaps normally would have. Uh, and that's fine considering the, the rapid changing conditions and the fact that multiple corners marshals would have been calling out stuff um, it was just good that they managed to red flag when they did because as you can see now it absolutely bucketed down if they hadn't red flagged it when they did you saw me run wide into two there it just would have been chaos heaps of people would have been well pretty much all of us would have crashed now you look at this cool down lap and the speed that we're doing compared to, to normal now most of us are either on slicks or very close to slick tyres You see there, like I'm in second gear rolling around and it's starting to have little bits of movement on me. And again, I've just had one crash. I don't want to have another one on the cool down lap. Uh, I don't want to repeat that. Again, I've already got that against my name once already. We're crashing on a cool down lap. I don't want that again. So we managed to just trundle it back, make sure everyone gets back safe. This is one of the last races of the day, I believe. And because the weather had come across, um, they may have also just postponed all of the racing to the next day. I think there might have been one race after us. Um, and then a bit of a delay because a big storm came. And then um, they may have tried to get one race in after that. But most of it was de delayed across to the next day, on to the Sunday. You can see just how wet the surface is there. It's completely slick now. You know, like I said, I was signalling to try to get it. Uh, the race red flagged or stopped or whatnot because I knew that weather was coming. Um, and if we were still trying to race on that on slicks, that would have been absolute nightmare. There's actually a person off to the right there as well. So in that last, you know, minute and a half of riding, we had four or five bikes go down. That's just how rapidly the conditions changed. Some inexperience as well. And you know, people are racing. They want to try to get position. They want to try to get points. You can see other riders in front of you still going, so you try to, you know, oh, if they can do it, I can do it. But, you know, even three or four seconds of, of rain onto a, onto a dry or even a, a dampening track can be too much for your slicks and, you, and you'll go down. So this is the outlap to race five, unfortunately. Uh, so we're back on Gen 3 here um, for the last race of Sunday. Unfortunately, there was two races uh, prior to that, which I did on Gen 1. We did have a GoPro mounted to Gen 1. Uh, it decided it didn't want to be part of the game anymore between Turn 1 and Turn 2 in the middle of one of the races and um, ejected itself. Now, we had it tethered on. Unfortunately, uh, the tethers failed. You know, you're going pretty fast and it's a, it was a fairly weighty uh, setup that we had and it separated. We went looking for it after the day. The ARDC staff and St. George crew were very uh, helpful with us there. Let us go out on track after the event had finished to look for it. Unfortunately, we couldn't find it. So I started this one from fifth. Uh, the first wet race of the day, I finished second. Um, that was red flag because there was a bunch of crashes at turn two, Carl being one of them. Um, the next race in the wet, I finished fifth. Plus I'm starting this race in fifth. So you got a Moto3 bike in first and third there in front of us. And you got Mick there on his Kramer 690. Another Moto 3 to our right. And then I believe it was an R3 to our left. Some of the conditions in uh, today on Sunday had changed quite a lot. So turn nine, you'll see that river, which I crashed on, isn't there. 
but on the entry to turn 11, there is a substantial river, which is quite dangerous. Again, we managed to get another absolutely cracking launch, a combination of the airbox and the, I think a big part of it is the geometry change as well. It just sets the bike nice and flat, kind of like the MotoGP bikes with their shape shifting or whatever you want to call them. The thing just doesn't squat, it just goes forward. Doesn't want to wheelie, it just absolutely goes. Again, on Sunday, the weather conditions were changing, the track conditions were changing a lot, so I did benefit from doing both 600 and Formula St. George, uh, which gave me, I think, a bit of a advantage to a point over some of our competitors in this class. Uh, one drawback is I was getting very tired by the end of this. I'd also injured my shoulder and was, you know, tired and sore. Not bike fit. I'd had a crash the day before. Again, passing Demi, I was a bit closer this time than I had been uh, on the Saturday. But still took a bit of time out of us because, again, I didn't want to scare her, but also I didn't want to call, put myself into an issue, a situation where I was going to crash. You can see turn nine is nice and dry now compared to what it had been when I crashed on the Saturday. But coming into turn uh, 11 and 12 here, there's a big river there. This big river here on entry. I had hit that a little too aggressively earlier in this race and I thought I was going to end up in the grass here on the left. Um, so I was taking it very gingerly through here towards the end of the race. Now I had been uh, using the, uh, the track layout just back there to see if there was a competitor any uh, close to me or getting close to me, should I say. Um, and I hadn't seen one, uh, unbeknownst to me. There was actually one of the kids on a Moto3 bike was getting close to me towards the end of the race. My pace was backing off because, again, didn't want to crash. I was in the same position I had been on Saturday morning where I was a good distance out in front of everyone. I made a pass on a back marker and lost two seconds there. And then coming into this final sector, I was like, oh, don't want to crash on that water. But, you know, two corners to go today. We've already done it three corners to go. Don't do it two corners to go. So... Nice and easy through here. And then just send it down the straight. So across the line to finish as a second first position for the weekend. So to cap the weekend off, it was an interesting weekend with the weather conditions, um, crash, Again, more weather conditions, issues with bikes and whatnot. Um, but with Formula St. George, we actually ended up uh, getting second overall uh, in Formula St. George. So I had one DNF, two wins, a second place and a fifth place, uh, which resulted in us getting second place overall, just in front of uh, a good friend, David, on his MTO7. And Mick Jeffrey on the Kramer got first place. Um, he had consistent top fours the whole time uh, as he's developing that bike and the use of that bike so congrats to, congrats to Mick congrats to David uh, it was a really good race uh, weekend despite a couple of the issues um, got to say a huge thanks to St George themselves I'm going to say a massive thank you to the Marshalls again those weather conditions they're out there volunteering to be out there we actually had on Saturday there wasn't enough Marshalls so some of the races actually gave up they're racing on Saturday to be able to allow the rest of us to race. So there was a couple of lads that did that. So an enormous thank you to them, as well as the rest of the volunteer marshals for, for being out there in, in those conditions and being able to allow us to race by being out there. So massive thank you to them. Uh, and then I've got to say massive thanks to all of our sponsors and supporters. We've ended up having to call a few of them uh, in order to get a few parts uh, and spares and whatnot to fix the damage from the crash. Uh, hopefully, Getting out there and, and winning a couple of races after the crash, though, is uh, a testament to the quality of the parts that we have on the bike. It's a wetie.